Absolutely. Well, I, I quite agree with you. I mean, it's it's one thing it's one thing if they go to to wind up the other team's fans if they you know they do the the cup in the air thing and that and you know wind wind up the opposition fans. Fair enough. Yeah, that should be a booking. But I think if you're going going towards your own fans and, and celebrating, I just you know I, I just think it's it's separating supporters from the game, isn't it? Well, it is. I would uh, looking at what you're saying there, Andrew. I look at Ad- Adi Bayo last you know mm. earlier on last year or back in the last last uh, last year when he, he celebrated for. Manchester City in front of the Arsenal supporters. Yeah, um, you know, and he, he's run sixty, seventy yards, and and fair enough, that's wrong. It, it doesn't matter what you say, and, and and I couldn't agree with it with his manager. I can understand players, you know, he's had an awful lot of stick and this, that, and the other. But at the end of the day, you know, if he's, he scored his goal for Manchester City, he should celebrate with their supporters, not go with the Arsenal supporters. Mm. And I think in that respect, then the referee was quite right to show him a, a, a yellow card because he could have actually started a riot. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I would, I would have thought if he'd, if he'd done the opposite way around and ran sixty or seventy yards to celebrate with the city supporters, you know, I think you you, you, you pull one side and say, look, don't Mister Silly, and enjoy your goal, but don't be extravagant in your celebration. Mm. Um, but like you say, it, it just seems as though that they're, they're trying to knock a little bit of the of the, uh, the joy out of the game for the people who are actually uh, experiencing the goal. Absolutely, I, I totally agree. I think I think he had to buy all situation. It's just amazing to see him run sixty yards anywhere to be <laughs> anywhere at all. To be yeah, honest, he, Harry, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't like. Well, he, people always say he doesn't like running too far, and <laughs> no. whatever, but he managed to get a good sprint in that, that afternoon. And <laughs> but I just, you know, I think we've got to be a little bit. Um, how can I say? It? We've got to use our loaves a little bit, and so have referees. And uh, again, it's because the people who probably are making the, the rules. Um, they don't know what it's like to score a goal, and if you if you've never had the experience of doing it, you'd, and you don't know what it's like, you know. But they're telling us, and they're mm-hmm. telling players, you know, not to do it. Yeah. So do we do we go back to the old style days where lads scored a goal and they just all shake hands and walk back to the centre circle? What what's the first thing supporters say? Well, they're not bothered whether they score or not. Yeah. Well, exactly. I mean, but I, I think, and, and as you alluded to earlier on, you know, our, our supporters, as an example, travel hours and hours. I, I wouldn't exactly. be surprised if we probably travel the furthest of any supporters yep. away. Um, and and when I, I know from experience, when the lads come over to celebrate, it means something. Of course, you know? it's, 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 it's part and parcel of being um, involved with the club, whether you're a player, a manager, or a supporter. I mean, you always stood behind the box and we score nine times out of ten. I always toss my arms up in the air. Yeah, of course. Because I'm as happy as we we're as happy on the bench on the on the sidelines as what the supporters are, as what the players are. And it's a, it's a combined um, joyous moment for everybody concerned with the club. But you know what what you're getting is you're getting this system where yes, score a goal and, and have a little wee celebration and just come back and let's get ready and you know wipe it out your out your out your mind. And mm. what I would also say is, if, if, even if you look at the papers again this Sunday, you'll see an awful lot of teams have scored in the 34th minute and they've celebrated as though it's gone out of fashion, and then the, the opposition's equalised in the 35th. Yeah, That's exactly. Straight off. No. Chelsea, Chelsea last night as, as an well, example, I, perhaps. Sorry. Yeah, I didn't see it. I mean, we we mm. had our sportsmen's dinner down at the club, so we were all down at, at, at Whitby last night. Yes. Um, and, and we didn't say that, but the only thing I would you know I, I, I say is. You're, you're worse when you've scored a goal. So what we try to do is we celebrate, we let the lads celebrate, but then as quickly as possible we, we get, in, get switched on, get switched on, make sure you don't concede. Absolutely, of course. Teams are often more most vulnerable after well, scoring a goal, goal themselves. Yeah, you're dead right, Andrew. Uh, and you talked about the uh, the sportsman's dinner last night, Harry, at the Saxonville. Um, and now I'm told that our captain Tony Ackworth donated the actual Leeds United shirt he wore at the New Camp in the uh, in the Champions League. Harry, is that right? Yes, that's quite correct. I mean, Tony brought his shirt along and uh, auctioned it, and I just think it, it shows the, the type of character that uh, you know Tony is. Yes. Um, like I said to you last week, Andrew is a He's a smashing lad. Um, he's got no airs and graces. Uh, he's certainly um, one of the best lads I've had, you know, uh, the pleasure of working with. Um, we had Jimmy Beadle there. Jed was there as well. Um, it was a it was a real good turnout. And, you know, I mean, even the the people that we were talking to on the night time, um, you know, were, were pleasantly surprised at you know the, at how the players were, and they were all talking to them. And I think it's something for the future. We've, we've certainly got to have a look at that in. You know, we try and get as many players there as possible, um, as long as they're on a, on a Friday night or anything like that. But, you know, it's one way for me that you get players more integrated into the club with supporters and, and sponsors and what have you. 
by getting you know the majority of them along to these type of functions. I, I agree, and it's uh, it's important. We're all sort of singing from the same sheet, exactly. and everybody's and exactly. we all want the same thing, which is obviously success for the football club. That's right. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think that's a fantastic gesture from uh, from Hacky there, oh, and uh, terrific. That's amazing. I think I think that, uh, that certainly shows just how much uh, the club means to him. I think that's fantastic. Hey, are you looking for a great venue to hold a birthday, christening, or anniversary party? Well, look no further. Whitby Town FC's clubhouse could be just what you need. And it could be free of charge, and there's plenty of car parking as well. So for more information, contact our chairman, Graham Manser. You'll be really glad you did. Um, now, Harry, uh, as always, every week on the podcast, um, I uh, ask the, uh, the Whitby Town supporters um, what, what they have to, to think and uh, whether they have any questions for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, the WTFC Southern Branch. There you go. He's, he's based down on the south coast. I know All that. Right, I thought fun. you were going to say the southern branch of Scarborough. We are near their south. Is <laughs> oh, I'm sure we've got plenty of supporters down there, but uh, but yeah, the southern branch right down there. Um, he's got a couple of questions. First of all, um, Harry, are you happy with the squad you have at the moment, or do you think that there could be a little bit of extra quality added in certain areas? Um, uh, we've got to, we've got to be happy with what we've got at the moment, Andrew. Because basically, it's, it's what we're going to afford. Mm. Um, that's that's the thing. I mean, would, I think every manager in the country would tell you they would love to strengthen the squad and, and obviously bring better players in. Uh, but but again, it's down to finance. Yeah, ab- well, well, absolutely. And I, I thought I, I sort of anticipated that response, actually, Harry. Um, and uh, and and he goes on to to add, which team do you think has the best chance to win the league this year? Um, I think Bradford. I think they have. I think this, the bad weather, you know, has obviously played right into Bradford's hands. They've got the points. They've got the. Um, to be fair to John Dacey, who's a, a good friend of mine, John, he's he's added some quality to the squad. Um, they've got a, they've got a big enough a big enough squad to certainly see them through. Um, had the had the play in two games away, but at the minute they're, you know they're possibly one of the few that's only going to be playing really maybe it's one game a week for the majority of the time and a couple. You know, at the most, so I would think they're in pole position, and you know, I would swap, certainly swap our position for their position. So I think the answer's got to be Bradford. I think they'll probably win the league. Okay, Harry, and finally, um, team news for for Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, as I say, we've got. Um, we're just waiting for Leon. Uh, Liam Gilday won't be there because he's he's got a job, so he's struggling. Um, and Camiel won't be there. David Campbell, he's a, he's a wait a stag do or something. Oh, been okay. Arranged for many months, I do believe. So um, it looks like we'll have Ben Esquith in, in goal for us on Saturday. Okay, Harry. Well, thank you very much for that. A pleasure, Andrew. Anytime. And, uh, excellent. And uh, hopefully, we'll be uh, able to catch up with you next week. Hopefully, after we've had a game, Andrew, with a bit of luck. <laughs> Keep the fingers crossed. Thanks a lot, Harry. Okay, Andrew. Whitby Town manager Harry Dunn there on the line. Uh, now, of course, uh, Matlock Town are our hosts this Saturday in Derbyshire, and hopefully, I've got a Matlock Town supporter on the line. Uh, good evening, Andy Duffin. And Andrew. Nice to have you with us, Andy. Um, yes, indeed. Uh, of course. Uh, now, 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 Andy does does have a, a, a slight Whitby Town leaning as well, but uh, he's a Matlock Town supporter. So, uh, so yeah, mi- mixed mixed feelings for Andy. But we know, but we know uh, he, he is a, he is a rival on Saturday. But we're still going to let him on the show for reasons of uh, of fairness. There you go. We're ticking all the boxes here, Andy. Thanks, Andrew. This political correctness gone mad. <laughs> well, there you go. Yes, we're letting Matlock fan on as well. Um, now, how how have you guys been going lately then? Yeah, we're doing well. Uh, we're unbeaten in five games. We've uh, won four out of those five games, Andrew. So uh, going really well at the minute, and only conceded two goals as well. So uh, oh, yeah, very yeah, pleasing. We're going good. Uh, of course, uh, the man to look out for is, uh, is is definitely Ross Hanner. I would have thought. Absolutely, uh, Ross. Again, having an absolutely incredible season. Uh, past the twenty goal mark again, and. Uh, well, what, what, what can I say about him? He's just absolutely top top drawer. Is Ross? Uh, his weight rate is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, one minute he's, he's chasing balls into the corner, next minute he's is uh, by helping out the defence. Then um, you know, then he's, he's, he's putting the goals away. So uh, absolutely, that delighted to have Ross at Matlock, and uh, yeah, danger man without a doubt. Yeah, and uh, I believe he's the, he's the second highest scorer in the uh, in the Unibon Premier as well, and I think he's only one goal uh, behind the current leader as well. I think he's got uh, is it twenty one this season, Andy? Yeah, I think it, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, though that's a, that's a bit of a worry from a Whitby point of view. Uh, 